Okay, this is a demonstration of some work that I've been spending a, a lot of time on lately, and that is bringing plugins into MarkEdit. Um, it's on the Mac version of MarkEdit. Uh, there's been plugins on the Windows version for a very long time. Uh, I create um, applications that uh, probably don't belong in the main part of the application, but uh, have general use for folks. Um, a couple examples of that is uh, turning RIS data into Mark or uh, the Internet Archive to Howdy Trust Packager, which is the one I'm going to show here. So um, there's a few things I still need to connect, the automatic updating, a few odds and ends, um, but for the most part I can show you how these work. Um, when you first install uh, the version of MarkEdit with plugins, you will see this icon. Um, if you click on it, you will find the Plugin Manager. Uh, we open up the plugin manager, we can see available plugins and installed plugins. Um, there will be none by default, so you just select it, and click download, and it will download it into your, into your uh, resource. Um, MarkEdit will be um, using the same process to automatically update plugins uh, by the time this comes out, so just the same as the Windows version, um, so that when you open the application, if there are plugins to be updated, you'll be prompted and can download that um, straight away. So once the plugin's been installed, um, you'll see that it shows up in the drop-down list of plugins that are available. Uh, from here uh, to run it, all you have to do is select the plugin. Um, you can see in this case, this looks like the version um, that's available on the Windows side um, for the Hattie, this is the Internet Archives, the Hattie Trust Packager. Um, you can either search by collection or contributor, uh, start and end dates, a save file, there's a debug URL so we can see the URL that's generated that will search into the Internet Archive to see if there's any content available. Uh, if you need information about how this works, you can click on this button, which will um, open up in a web browser uh, the information um, related to um, how this works. It's the documentation that's um, on the website, the Mark Edit website, so you can see how the Hadi Trust pro uh, process works. Uh, this is the Windows version, but it's going to work roughly about the same. And then we can go ahead and run it. So we'll have a text file that gets generated. Uh, we'll go ahead and run. You'll see that the status here tells us how many records it's found um, as it starts processing them through. Um, so uh, while it's running, um, you can see that it works really relatively quickly. It's creating a temporary file in the background, uh, processing the data, um, pulling the Internet Archive structure data, um, pulling metadata information that's been stored um, with the Internet Archive, and then merging them together um, into a MARC XML file that then you would submit to the Hadi Trust, uh, and that would allow them to be able to go to the Internet Archive and, and collect the information um, about your resources that have been digitized and are being stored there. So this is wrapping up. Six, seven, process is complete. This is the file that was generated. We can open it up. You can see it's a MARC XML file. Um, you can see the data um, here that uh, is most of interest to um, the Hadi Trust is the resources right here. Uh, the 955, which stores information about the um, identifier over at the Hadi Trust as well, or at the Internet Archive as well as the ARC. Um, so that's the information. That's uh, that's that's all you need to make it run. Um, for those folks who are actually plugin builders, um, the process is going to be slightly different than you'll find on Windows. Um, in Windows, um, plugins can actually embed. Uh, the windows that are going to be the the windowing applications that are going to be used um, the uh, when a, something's compiled on either Windows or, or Linux those resource files get embedded into the library. Uh, the Mac system works slightly different. Um, they have these files called nibs, which are essentially um, representations of the user interface. It makes it really easy to load into Xcode, uh, the program that you use to make changes. Um, but the problem with that is that those files are not embedded into um, a library. Uh, the way that Apple works is um, essentially an application is basically a zip file and inside that zip file is a content uh, contents directory and all of the nib files are expected to be found in that contents directory. Um, obviously for a plugin like this I won't have it 
um, and I can't put it into the contents directory um, because there's a chance you may have named a file the same as me. Um, but the other thing that it would do is it would invalidate the, the application, which is signed, um, to make sure that it hasn't been tampered with. So, um, to make this work, we have to go a little bit back more to more of an old school style programming. You'll see that um, there are windows here, um, but these are actually constructed. So, um, we create, we define up on top the properties, the, the values that we're going to create. So, in this case, we have a number of fields and some buttons. Um, we actually have to create those by hand. So we will create the bounding elements and we're going to create the buttons, the coordinates, and the values and the styles associated with them. And then we create um, the, the wires, the wire the wiring up them, and then uh, the functions that they work with. And so we actually have to do all of that work. Now in order to make this easier um, for folks long term, because we do have a number of folks that do um, create plugins. Um, I will create a template uh, that shows the example of how this works, um, but also will include templates down here. So um, if you need to create a label, you can run uh, just create label, and this will bind up um, the most common styles that would be associated with doing um, label creation or a, a text field, um, a text field for editing. Uh, same thing for a button. So you can create a button that's either round or not round or however you want to create it. So hopefully this will make the process a little bit easier for folks who are creating um, plugins. And, and my hope is that um, uh, the folks at Princeton who's created the, the Penion pl plugin for Mark Edit Windows will be interested in, in giving this a go. And, and I'm uh, uh, either on their own or um, uh, see if they're interested in, in uh, having me give them a hand. Um, but this allows you to um, still embed windows into your library, create as many as you need. Um, you just have to take a little bit more responsibility over, uh, over how they get created. So it's a, a slightly different process, takes a little bit more time um, than, than on the, uh, the Windows side of things. But as you can see uh, uh, in the example, um, the results are that it works. So. Uh, this will play out um, in one of the next updates uh, to the Mark Edit Mac, um, and probably it'll initially include um, the Internet Archive How Do you Trust plugins as well as the RIS plugins, uh, and then I'll go back through the the current plugin library that I maintain and see what looks like it would be um, applicable uh, to port um, into the uh, the Mac plugin space. Uh, so if you have questions, let me know.